Hi, I'm Bran, and I love When Calls the Heart. Hi, I'm Jax, and I like When Calls the Heart. I'm Dan, and I despise When Calls the Heart, and this is the Deck, Deck the, the Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. Podcast. Much better. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! Wow, man, we're back again. Yeah, yeah, we are. are you okay? I was just thinking about how we need to get like a new theme song and a new video. Yeah, we probably need those gone. Things. Maybe by yeah. next week, first week of September, roll first, out some new stuff. First week of September. So yeah. you did two of the old one, and we're gonna go the next week. You'll have a new one. Well, I think so. I, you know, pandas. Uh, this is the first week without panda. You want to? Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Ease people into well, it. You know, clean break. Clean break. We don't talk to him anymore. No, mm-hmm. no, no. Wait, sorry, who's Panda? That's exactly right. <laughs> I never, I've never. We don't talk about Panda. <laughs> no, no. Can we just superimpose my face over his body in all the videos? You yeah. want to know what's crazy? You know, there's a movie coming out or it is out called Fall where someone's like falling yeah, off or yeah, something. Yeah. I saw that the movie, um, they did deep fake to cut out 30 plus F bombs to make it a PG 13 movie. So, like, Holy you can't tell. Cow. So, they deep fake, like, they changed the, the person's lips. And then eighty yard it, so it's like a lot of freakings. But like they, but they did. <laughs> and they deep. put that in the theaters. Yeah, D- deep fake technology is. I saw deep fake te- technology live. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my! You gosh. saw them live? It was an underground show. Yeah, you had to have a secret knock to get. Did in. the tech work down there? It did work wow. really well. Wow. It was so well, like, I think it was a deep fake. Wow. Uh, well, you're back. You flew back down. Yes. How was the flight uh, going? I, I got to be honest. When Ted threw this idea at us to fly you down every week, I, I was see you once unsure. We did. Bramble Fest was wonderful last week. So much which, fun. I had a blast, I mean, you guys. On, wasn't it great? It was so much oh, fun. My goodness. And when that thing happened. Oh, my gosh. You don't even. We no, can't talk no, about no, it. We can't. Well, no. you had we to can't. be there. You had no. to be there. That's yeah. what the in-person tickets so for. Or virtual. You know what I mean? Or virtual. Yeah. I'm still a little embarrassed about it. No. Whatever. No, 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 no. No one's going to bring it up. No one's going to bring it up. Um... But you're here. Yeah. So, Ted, so my flight was a little late. So Ted and I, we only got an appetizer at the top. Wow. House. What'd you I could be here on time. We had um, artichoke dip. Okay. Artichoke dip. Yeah. Interesting. At the chop house. Yeah. Interesting. Is that his choice? No, it was mine. Yeah. He's a gentleman. <laughs> really swung for the fences. Wow. <laughs> artichoke dip. You didn't get anything. You got an artichoke dip. Uh, Rick, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great, Brad. Pan, it's nice to see you as well. <laughs> Again, it's not Pan. Pan is, Pan is not oh, with us anymore. Oh, shiver me timbers. I'm really sorry about yeah. that. It's, it's just tough to see. Do you remember her name? I do. Jennifer. Right. <laughs> it's Jennifer. Yeah. I'll get it eventually. That's Jennifer. You just say, oh, it is. Oh, yes, good. Right. First try. Jen. Jen and Panda. Easy to remember. That's exactly right. Thank Thank you. Again, but Panda's not here. Yeah. That's no. right. I'm doing great, though. Thank you for asking. Uh, what's going out on Fitzy's? Oh, you know, we just had the rat derby. <laughs> what's a rat derby? You know, uh, we get rats. You know, it, it, here's the thing is that DA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is the what? They love DA it? Can, they can't count the rats as being unclean if they're part of a derby. <laughs> I don't, I don't, did you clear that with anybody? I don't think that's true. Yeah, we, we made, <laughs> they can't, d can't count, they legally can't count them. They have pets there to race. <laughs> right, but you still, you can't bring a, a pet rat into. It's above board and it's all on the floor. We put a chalk outline, there's glass barriers, and we cut the rats loose, whoever wins, wins. My money's on you. Is that the name of a... Uh, you, yes. E-W-E, named after you, Bowl independent filmmaker. You should check out his fantastic. movies. They're fantastic. When's the next rat race? Next week. We're all we kind of... We got our C-plus, so we're good to go. We're all kind of living in a rat race. C-plus is goof for rats. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Brant. Can I ask you this really quickly? Okay. See, you got a C-plus? This seems a little long for my you, segment, yeah. but okay. You, you got a C-plus? Yeah. Is that down? To be fair, we got a C, and then Fitzy goes out there with a Sharpie and just throws a plus on there. I think it fools a lot of people, we especially a lot of people that have betting on the rat derby. And really quick, how was Boss Baby Fest? Uh, Boss Baby Fest was wonderful. You know, we had three uh, conjoining hotel rooms at the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> yes. One room had the film playing. The film going, one, one had, had the speakers, TV show, the TV show. And one had the Boss, the boss babies. babies. Yes, they were all there in full suits and ties. How many babies? Tens. <laughs> Tens of babies in one Tens room at the Red Roof Inn. Babies. Don't call them babies. They're boss babies. Okay. There was a there was a room at the Red Roof Inn with tens of babies. Tens of boss babies. <laughs> they were organized. They're boss babies. We can't keep doing this, Reg. We can't keep doing this. This is not safe. 
C plus rat derby. These are two different events. I'm All fine with you. the rat race. Not fine with the Boss Baby Fest. I'm, you I'm, can't I'm, call I'm, it rat race for legal reasons. Because of the movie. Yep. <laughs> when goes the heart season eight episode two? It's called honestly Elizabeth. It isn't. Is it really? It is. As if. And it, it originally aired <laughs> on February twenty eighth. 2021 and <laughs> went a little something like this. Little Jack is looking at a picture of Big Jack. And that makes Elizabeth sad because he's never going to know his dad because he's dead. Uh, she's supposed to meet Helen. That's Lucas's mom. Uh, to, to work on her book because Helen thinks that her book is... Uh, I. This, she didn't say this, but she thinks it's trash. Um, Lee hurts his back. She doesn't think it's trash, right? Spend a lot of time rewriting it. I, she ne- Okay, go spend, ahead. Spend a lot of time working on that book. Does she think oh, it's trash? Brand looked at me like, oh, um, uh, uh, I, Just pick a side, Jack. I think that she thinks that it could use some work, but it has a lot of potential. There we go. Bing, bang. Lee hurts we his... both think we're right. <laughs> Lee hurts That's his. What Jax does. <laughs> she exactly never right. picks a side exactly on that. Right. Plus, she's uh, on the bubbly sesh for years and years. <laughs> uh, Lee that hurt. Too close to home. <laughs> <laughs> Lee hurt his back being excited to receive a large crate. But don't worry. Last season, Lee bounced back from a concussion in a day, so this is going to be no problem Easy at all. Peasy. I'm fairly certain that Allie is into Robert. <laughs> Uh, it makes mm. us all sick to our stomach, and I'm yeah. sure we'll find out more about this later. Uh, this uh, guy who made the delivery, his name is Joseph, and everybody in this town of Hope Valley is very chill with the fact that there's a random black guy in their very white town in 1917. That's right. Uh, Carson says that Lee is going to need a chiropractor, and they all assume that that's some kind of voodoo. Uh, Nathan, so it's that's then. exactly right. No? Uh, Nathan <laughs> talks to Bill about wanting to adopt Allie ASAP before Dalen gets out of jail. I'm Dalen. Uh, Henry tells Lucas that he wants back into the oil business. <laughs> and Lucas is as surprised as we were that the writers couldn't come up with literally anything else for Gowan to do this season. Joseph's car breaks down, so he takes a stroll through Hope Valley looking for gas. Everyone is skeptical of Fiona being able to cut hair, seeing as how she's never cut hair before, but immediately she makes everything better by almost cutting a guy's ear off. <laughs> Robert get, got, got, got on a runaway horse, and so... Did you say horse? And so Elizabeth goes to save him, gives him a stern talking to, in case you forgot that she's a teacher. Uh, Joseph sees a gas station for sale, and he's interested in living in a town that doesn't contain a single racist. Helen tells Elizabeth <laughs> that her husband left and that Elizabeth doesn't know what to do about this and uh, with this information. And she also says, you cannot tell Lucas about this. So she's in a tough spot. Uh, Gowan goes nuts when he assumes that Ned opened a letter. Ned is like, I would never. All of the boys in town decide to give Fiona a shot to cut their hair. So good. Well, the wives make them. A little, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Gowan caught a second wind, I guess, and returns to yell at Ned some more. As he leaves again, he falls. Carson tells him to see him. Nathan tells Elizabeth about a uh, land that he's going to buy uh, and build a house on and live on. And that he, uh, can, he thinks he can see them living on the land. Mm-hmm. Now, he clarifies that he means him and Allie. But we all know what he means there. Have they been to dinner yet? No. Uh, she <laughs> says that it would be too hard to, uh, to if, if, if you know he's in the Mounties, it would be tough if she ever had to say goodbye because of the Mounties. And he says, I love you. And also, I would leave the Mounties like yesterday. Elizabeth awkwardly says nothing and rides away on a horse. And that, my friends, was Win Calls the Hard Season 8, eight episode, episode 2. two. Honestly, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. We're going to take a quick break. We and we're going to be it. right back here that. on Deck the Hallmark. We're back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Deck the Hallmark. Wind calls the heart. It's a Thursday, and we're feeling fine. We also, this has been a tough, I mean, we just did Bramble Fest, so we're kind of exhausted. I'm exhausted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm zonked. 
This is all fake energy, right? Yeah, now. yeah. fake energy, uh, guys. Yeah. Let's talk about. We and you had to we fly. Love this show. That's right. You, we, had yeah, the, I had to fly. you had to fly yeah. back mm-hmm. and forth, which is really. Uh, let's talk about honestly, Elizabeth. The second episode of season eight. Uh, once again, Jax, you have talked about this episode again years ago. By years ago, I mean year ago. Um, you and now, have talked about this episode again years ago, is yeah. what you just said. Yeah. Are you proud of that sentence? But let's do it again, shall we? What let's do you do think about this episode of television, Jax? Um, as someone who's very clumsy and gets little injuries a lot, I found this episode to be a little triggering. Okay. With a, First, we have Lee's back injury. Yeah. They didn't the, even think to put a trigger warning no, they, at the no. beginning of this episode. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Come on, Tinker. You're better than that. Thanks a lot, Tink. Tinker Donovan. Um, so, yeah, we got Lee's back injury. Then we have Robert on the runaway horse. And then we have Hickam almost getting his ear cut off. So there was you a know lot his happening. Name, good. Yeah, oh, oh, I actually really love Hickam. Ben Rosenbaum. I think he's a really good actor and sure. I hope they use him in more right. things. Hickam. Um, Hickam. Hickam, boys. Hickam. Hickam. <laughs> Panem. Panem. Um, nice. That's a deep nice cut, callback. you guys. Thank oh, you uh, for the fans out there, um, for the real double deckers. But yeah, this episode was fun. I actually thought it picked up a little. Okay. Especially because we got to see more of Tara Rothery putting Elizabeth in a really impossible yeah. position. Yeah. <laughs> a little Tara awkward. Rothery shows up and is just like, hey, good luck. <laughs> You're not even really dating my yeah. son, but no. I'm just going to dump this on mm. you. Um, also, something about this episode that annoys me a little, not the content of it, because I think it's interesting, but there's this thing that's happening where Elizabeth is like, well, I made sure that my writing didn't interfere with my life. And as someone whose career is a very big part of my life and a big passion for me, it kind of irked me. Mm, Not that she shouldn't spend time with her son because yes, my family and my friends are very important to me. Not that teaching, which is her other career, shouldn't be important, but baby girl, like you got a book deal and you kind of have to put the time into it. So I I like this episode a lot. It was very entertaining, but it was giving me a a lot of... um, it was pushing a lot of buttons a lot over of buttons. here on, for Jax here. Um, so, you know, Nathan said, I love you. That's great. It's good. Uh, but let's get to what really matters here, which is what in the world is going on with Cowan? No kidding. I, I'm fascinated at all of what's going on. There's a lot of layers to Gowan right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one is... I'm sure he he's, feels that way. Martin Cummins, I'm sure he feels that way too. One is... He seems like he's on the verge of he's, death, he, right? He, he seems like very inebriated he's not doing times. well. He falls down at some point. He is very like nervous that someone's opening his mail, and we don't know why. Blood pressure, supposedly. Blood pre- but the mail? That's not blood pressure related. I feel like Martin Cummins, who I think is a really good actor, to get him to stay in the show, they're like, we'll let you do whatever you want. You want to do some like deep character work, but go it, for I'm it. I'm just telling you, people are going to like cross-reference your bubbly sesh episodes with these. That's going to happen. You cross-reference Gowan from season one, who is just a villainous, mm-hmm. treacherous. This guy's like Otis the Town Drunk from the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> yeah. He literally's got a beard and he's like, well, I don't know if you don't what, hit it. Like, he's like got a Southern, super Southern accent. What are they doing? What's happening? Why yeah. Why is he like this? So, yeah, he's falling down. He seems like he's drunk or dying or both. He's paranoid someone's opening his mail, and he wants back into the oil business. I am truly am fascinated with Gowan. My concern is that none of this is going to pan out to be anything. It's just going to be like, oh, you know, episode six, all is well. We never get any clarification on the male situation. I'm nervous about all of this. But as of this episode, that was uh, uh, gripping. I'm a big I'm a big Gowan fan, as everybody knows. Gowan is back, as I've said. And uh, so I feel I feel felt really good about that in this episode. Uh, I can't really believe that they that Nathan said I love you and it it yeah. didn't it didn't i don't know maybe it's just the way that i watched it but it didn't feel like a a moment it didn't feel like it didn't feel it, like it, he it, should like say it he said all. he said i love you and she rode away on a horse uh and it like i almost like if you blink you miss it almost like it was so fast and so i don't know didn't see it coming to be honest with you but what can you do so overall fine again dan yeah the entire embodiment of when calls the heart can be found in the fact that nathan grant hasn't had time for a dinner with elizabeth in six months 
but did just say that I love you. And I'd quit my job. Speaking of livelihoods, I quit my <laughs> job and my livelihood for someone I've not gone to dinner with yet. I don't know how we read that as romantic. That was real bad. That was like, for the first time in a long time, I was like, maybe I'm team Lucas. Oh. That's how bad that was. Wow. Um, this was bad television. Fiona's never cut hair. She's open to barber shop. Nathan's never been on a date with Elizabeth. He says he loves her. Uh, Gowan wants back in the oil business. Tinker, if if you're going to turn the ship around, let's start going ahead and steering it. Let's start going. <laughs> let's go ahead and like get that U-turn moving, buddy, because it does not look good right now. But compared to last week's, more happens. So more bad is better than less bad, I I think. Yeah. So bad. You're so rattled, you're not even sure. I'm not even sure. Do I want more bad or do I want less bad? I'm not, you're right, I'm not sure. I got nothing. Bad television. That's all I got. Uh, it is time for... All the feels. All the feels. This is the part of the show we talk about one of the episodes that gave us feels. Jackson, any feels for you? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, when Rosemary, I we know how badly... Or at least I do. Uh, she wants to have a child. Yes, and have yes. she and Lee want to have. So I didn't. Mean, I just didn't want to put that on you guys. <laughs> um, but when she talks about, actually, this is a real the heart feel for me when she talks about hearing his little Jack's laughter. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I have never tried to have a child, nor would I like to. But I think that. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Wow. I love kids, though. Yeah. Um, but I can imagine that if that's what you want more than anything in the world to not be able to do that and to want it so badly. Uh, my heart just goes out to her and the way that Pascal Hutton played that moment, I thought was really beautiful. So that was all the feels. Shout out to me. Pascal. Yeah, she's good. Um, guys, you know, uh, if you've listened for a while now, how much I love Allie. I yes. don't think we give Allie He's enough an to Allie do. Stan. I'm an Allie Stan. Yeah. I'm the one. He's the one. And, um, <laughs> You also know that I am uh, the opposite of um, of a Robert Stan. I yes. am uh, Robert should yes. kick rocks, kick and rocks. I've exactly. put it on the record many times. The fact that I feel like they are getting us geared up, uh, you know, oiled up <laughs> for those two to to end up together. It, I, I am so mad about it. Um, and God forbid I die tonight. And this is the thing that's on my mind. I just don't like they shouldn't. They, you shouldn't play with a man's heart like that. That is wrong. It's wrong. These two kids should not end up well, together. Speaking of them being kids, can I ask a follow up? Do we know their age difference? Because he's a lot older than her, you guys. In, in like real life? life? No, no. Like I think on the show, he's already well, Robert's been well. on the show for eternity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So he's at least, I don't know, my guess, 90? I think there's probably like a, my, my guess is probably like a, a two-year age. Difference. I thought they were about, like, Allie is a teenager and he's a, teenager. he's a teenager. I thought that she was like 13, 14 and he had already sort of graduated. No. No, no. no, no Robert's been taking okay. the same six math equations. Oh, okay. My <laughs> guess, my guess is he's 17, she's 15. Okay. And I, yeah, okay. That's, Yeah. Uh, but that's just guesswork on my part. 16 and listen, maybe I'm misreading the clues Love here. Maybe I'm misreading things here. But if they do end up together, I just know that I do not support it. And I will uh, re renounce my stan of Allie. Your Allie stanship. Yeah. Wow. I'll renounce it. Man. I'll I'll renounce it. I'm here it. for that. Yeah. If mm -hmm. that happens. Sam? What if they get married? What if they get married before Elizabeth and Lucas? <laughs> One, wouldn't be surprised, but two. Uh, <laughs> so many marriages can yeah. happen way quicker. Yeah. Jesse and Clara meet, get married. Yeah, Easy. right. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dan? Uh, yeah, Robert can't ride a horse. <laughs> He's been in school for 100 years. Was he too busy kicking rocks to like learn how to like? He's got a dad who's like active. It's not like he's like an orphan who d didn't have like parents at home. Like, how do you not know how to ride a horse? Doesn't his dad don't doesn't they he own live, a big farm? Doesn't he live on a farm? Yes. How does he get to and from school every day? <laughs> don't know ride a horse. Get out of here, Robert. You've been on the show for nine seasons. The show's only been around for eight. How do you not know how to ride a horse? <laughs> Couldn't believe it. And he wants what to be a that, Mountie. Yeah. Or yeah. did that not happen yet? Not yet. I'm so no, no, sorry. No, he says it. He, okay. yeah, he does want it. to be. Yes. Okay, well, he should learn how to ride a gosh darn horse if that's yeah. the case. I would say at the very least. And stop being the worst. 
<laughs> Stop being such a d bag, guys. I shouldn't read the comments. Apparently, there's an Ali Robert love triangle coming this way. Oh, you got to renounce your Ali standship. I now. won't. I will. No, oh no, you not, said not until it happens. Okay, all right. I can't do it I'm, on hearsay. I'm, I'm so excited. I can't do it on hearsay, Dan. You don't just renounce stands on hearsay. <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back here next. All right. I think Payne is still watching the show like he said he would. No, gosh, no. Welcome he said back. He's a completist, though. He'll finish. He might, but he'll. Here's what he'll do: is he'll watch it on like two speed. He'll find a way to watch it like at two times speed <laughs> in the background, like to say he's done it. Yeah, yeah. that's what he'll yeah. do. Which yeah. is fair. I mean, that's more than I would do. I'm a completist. <laughs> I thought so, but th- if if you told me I was done, I would never watch another one of these. <laughs> I want to be clear. Uh, yeah, fair. Uh, let's talk about the wait what's. Uh, things that in this episode made us say wait what. Jax, anything stick out to you? Um. <laughs> Oh, here, here we go. Uh, no, here no, I do. I am curious. You guys have already touched on this. I love Fiona's chutzpah and that she's starting yeah. a business where she's men will, she's it. getting after it. That's right. She's going to be a big wheel and she's starting her own business and she's starting a business very smartly where she can hear men talking to each other about business because I think she really wants well, to get into yeah, some other things. Of course. But it probably would have been a little bit better if she found something, maybe like yeah. shoe shining that, yeah. Was a, a little bit easier and that's less of like a skill set. Like something that you just know how to do. You just know how to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've been working on phones, and yeah. now you're just going to cut hair. I I don't know how that works. I don't know how it works. No. So that was my biggest. Well, the answer is it wait, doesn't. What? It doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. That's <laughs> what happens. Uh, is that it, Jax? Yeah, that's it for me. Um. So Gowan uh, walked in, saw his mail, got mad, yeah. left. And then, for reasons unknown, comes back to yell again more. He left yeah. and came back. What well, what happened after he left that made him go? You know what? I'm not done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not done giving that a piece of my mind. Uh, that was weird to me. That was weird. Weird to leave and then come back. Um, I also don't know if you can just call Mounties. Uh, hey, one eight hundred Mounties. Um, yeah, I'm done. Being a Mountie? Is being a Mountie something you can quit? Because that's what Nathan's claiming he will do. Yeah. He'll call he'll call Mountie and say, Mountie, I'm done. I, I think it is. It's more can like you a call, police force than is it? it is like an armed service. Uh, also like the, I don't I I'm I, I gotta be honest, I am unsure what a Mountie on, is. Uh, on, I'm, I'm, Mountie, I'm yes. also worried about the fact that uh, as we've all said, they, they don't have much of a relationship yet. And we know he doesn't have even a thousand I mean, a thousand bucks is a lot of money, but it he is. doesn't have enough money saved to have a thousand dollars and he's supporting Allie, but he's yet gonna he's going to quit his mm, job. The yeah. only thing that I think he probably knows how to do, oh. like that's well, grossly responsible. Anyone, yeah. <laughs> anyone, 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 anyone can do it. Yeah, just, it's no big deal. She's it's got no an deal. extra chair there. Why don't yeah, you have two chairs at that barbershop? That's one of mine anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to run a barbershop. Two chairs. <laughs> two chairs, please. I can cut two heads at once, can't you? Snip, 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 snip. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Just have one hand No, you No, you plan for growth. You plan for growth. Right. That's you have the other chair I'll to make it somebody seem, else that can't cut hair. That's exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, Nathan <laughs> might be in the might be on the job for a scene. Um, Dan, yeah, I know that she can't cut hair, but I would assume that at the very least, you would know that when you cut someone's hair, you put that r- cape around their neck, not under their collar, <laughs> because if you put that under their collar. There's no reason that that should be on them. Nope. Yeah. You no don't reason. put it on there for the clothes, like to protect no. clothes. You do no, it to you do the, it to literally protect the hair from getting in, in the, the, the clothes. That's how that works. I, that's just, I know that just from getting my hair cut. I think that is a very, very easy, you know. And the Would pain, you have known that, Jax? I, I mean, you I don't know much, but yeah. It seems like not only around. is she not cut hair before maybe she's never had her hair cut professionally because you would know yes. that just having experience it's just it. a just a ba- even if you're not professionally even just in someone's living room yeah. you get your hair cut once and your neck itches you're like i get it i understand I get what's it. happening i mean it's not, it's not rocket science i mean it's pretty straightforward uh i did write down this line you already mentioned it but i write down I decided not to let my writing interfere with my life. Now, dumbest sentence I've ever heard? Probably. Does, or is her writing about her life? Yes, it's a lot of it is based on her life. 
So one, stupid. Two, <laughs> that you got a book deal. This is part of your life. It is. I'm sorry. You can, if you do this, if you decide to not let writing interfere with your life, then you've decided to not write. That's what that means, you doofus. Um, why, hey, be kind. Why does be Lee, kind? Why does Lee? Okay, I'll try my best. Why is Lee? Use a different you, word. He is not a, doofus. Not doofus. I said stupid earlier. Fine. I don't want that either. Doofus. I don't is want okay. stupid what or doofus. Nimrod. Can I get away with Nimrod? She has a complete lack of work ethic. Yeah, no work ethic. She's there too busy go. not going to dinner with Nathan. <laughs> um, <laughs> so Lee stra uh, sprains his back, stays in the hospital as long as he does when he had that big concussion. No big deal. But when he goes home, he relaxes in his bathrobe over his dress shirt. <laughs> is it an episode of The Honeymooners or when Ricky <laughs> Ricardo is homesick? Why in the world does he have a dress shirt and pants on under a bathrobe with a sprained back. I gotta be honest, I actually think those are uh, Jesse's pants. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. He just cut that scene. Nice Very guys. good, nice callback. I brand. just, I couldn't get over the fact that he's in a full dress attire with a robe on over top of it. And uh, yeah, you said in the in the intro, in the synopsis, Brian, that there's not a single racist person in uh, Hope Valley. And that might be true, but we did have Lee and Rosemary dress baby Jack up as a caballero <laughs> for laughs. And I want to. Guys, be, that was rough. I want to be clear. They thought it would be funny to get a traditional Mexican cowboy outfit, giant sombrero. It's not Halloween. Giant sombrero, giant overcoat, bright colors, and they just laugh and laugh. What are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. It was a choice. That uh, was brutal, man. I think even if it was it's Halloween, not, it would have been a, still even a little... Even Halloween would be bad. Yeah. But like, what? where did they have that at the mercantile? <laughs> did Lee walk in and go, Ned, listen, do you have a baby caballero outfit? Because I got a bit that's going to okay. crush. This bit is going to crush. I'm going to put a two-year-old in like it. I've been saving we're this for a rainy we're day. We're going to laugh at the Mexican cowboys. It's going to be hysterical. Yeah. Jack is so white. It's going to be funny. <laughs> like, and Ned's like, well, let me check in the back. I sold my last one to Jack. <laughs> sold, my la sold my last one to Bill Avery. Don't ask. <laughs> like I like. What do you like? What do you want from me? <laughs> this, I, I, I just. It's wild. I say I'll, uh, this. just just uh, say what you will. But there was we never had this type of racism before Bill Abbott left. So <laughs> not this type. No, not this type. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So everyone can quiet down. Uh, it's time for Hopes of Valley. This is part of the show. We talk about one of this episode. But I us. can't say doofus. That's well, yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Hopes and valleys. You get it. Uh, anything giving you hope or bumming you out for the future of this program? Um, I think a hope is that I love uh, Florence and Ned's relationship. I think they're so cute together. I love how fiercely protective she is of him. I think that um, I, I think that I wish that we devoted some more screen time to that. Things that are bumming me. Oh, and I also really like Viv Leacock, and I'm glad that he's in town. Who? Who? The, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Joseph oh, the new guy. The new guy. Yes, he's the new guy. The guy. He's yes. gonna, Viv Leacock. That's a great name. He was also in Haley Dean Mysteries. Oh, yeah. And I'm excited we that we're we going to see a preacher. It, yeah. Wait, did you up. actually? We've oh, never seen him. Oh, my gosh. You're actually so good, you guys. Okay. Um, real buddy comedy thing. But I, I digress. Um, I think that, and also, I will say, what's bumming me out, just to piggyback on what you said Bran I'm not here for the Robert Alley romance either yeah. I, it makes me uncomfortable and I know some of what we're going to see later and it's not too cringe but it, it's not I don't know how you'll end up I think we speak for everyone in the world that's not related <laughs> to the actors that play Alley and Robert when we say no <laughs> I think maybe even they're not rooting yeah, for it right? they're like why what, they're like, what? Do, do we have to yeah do you yeah. think Robert's, the actor that plays Robert, he, he couldn't ride a horse in real life? And they're like, we'll work it in the show. <laughs> we'll make it a bit. We'll make it a thing. It's possible. Yeah, yeah I mean, my, my hope it continues to be fully in uh, Gowan and what we're going to see with Gowan. I think he's the Gowan's most exciting. Gowan's back, baby. Gowan's back. Gowan continues to be the most exciting part of this show, and I am here for 
it. You know what? I'm not going to let anything bum me out today. I'm not here for that. I have a new hope, and that. that hope is when the day that Bran has to renounce his alley standship, <laughs> that is going to be a big mm-hmm. day. And I'm so excited for that day. I think I know the episode is going to be, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> you heard it here. It's happening. Oh, yeah, that stings, doesn't it? My valley is, is that episode probably isn't next week. So, you know, got to wait. Uh, well, something, But you know what? I got something to hope for for the first time in a long time. So thanks, Brian. I exactly. No worries, buddy. Yeah. Um, this stuff for what's called my heart. I hope we don't run out of emails. We're going <laughs> to. <laughs> I mean, if we were like do like a batch of the like 20 of these in a row, we'd yeah. run out probably. You know what would be really ama- like amazing is if like, I don't know, all the double deckers wrote an email tonight. <laughs> Just something. Like or just if they something. would have done it like a week ago. Or, that yeah, would have been amazing. Yeah, like they could, yeah, 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 they could go back in time and do time. it. Like if before like, Bramble Fest. Yeah, before Bramble That's Fest. That, was, that yeah. would be awesome. You guys, is there a time machine? Cool. That would be really yeah. cool if everybody did that and send one to hello at deckthehomer.com like just for the just hypothetical. Just in case we bashed them out instead yeah. of did the thing where Ted yeah. sends them down. Yeah, but I'm so. enjoying my time with Ted. Who isn't? Who isn't? Do we have anything? We do. It's from Julie Nicewander. You can Ooh, what a great hello name. at deckthehomework.com. I thought you were going to give her right. email. You're yeah. going to email her. You can find her. Her social security number is <laughs> she banks at Truist Bank. Uh, <laughs> hi, boys. First off, thanks for all you do. You've heard it before, and you'll hear it again. You guys are the best. Oh, thanks, Julie. You're doing God's work by watching Wind Calls the Heart. I've never seen it and don't plan to, wow. but I never miss a review episode. What's calling my heart blows is my remembering a Ben Savage story from around 2007, 2008. You're a Ben Savage You know I love Stan. Ben Savage. You right. know I love Ben Savage. We'll offline about that. Yeah, Sorry. No, do you I, have I a Ben heard. Savage story? I, I've heard things. Uh <laughs> I Do you was, have a Ben Savage story? Have you met him? <laughs> no, Did you have to interview him for the... We have to offline about it. About it. Yeah. Sorry. Right. That was total... I, I love you. I'm sorry, everyone. So, right. I'm done. We'll right. cut this. We don't talk about, we don't talk about Fred, but, we don't talk uh, but about I, love, Savage. I love Ben Savage. Oh, I, I was you, yeah. fresh out of... I'm going to just cut you off in the past there. I was <laughs> fresh out of college, and my friends and I moved all across the country. Moved all... So we all spread <laughs> out, I think, is what she's I think that's what she's saying there. For the for our first reunion, we visited a friend in California. One night, we went to an L.A. club. Oh, boy. Can I stop you right here? I think that this is going to paint Ben Savage in a positive light. <laughs> okay. My friends and I were pretending to fit in when we spotted Ben Savage in a private area of the club. I still feel good about this. <laughs> it was closed off by partitions and ropes. Still feel good. Oh, I love partitions. <laughs> but we managed to get as close as possible to attempt to meet him. He was dancing and bouncing around like he was having some Coke. Parentheses, Coca-Cola or maybe Pepsi. No, Who can tell? I don't think he does that. Yeah, he would never drink caffeine. <laughs> Somehow I got close enough to his group and he noticed us. He came up to me and said, No. What's <laughs> I think it's going to be okay. Where are you girls from? Okay. You look like you're a bunch of sorority sisters from Indiana. I don't like that. When I told him that we were, in fact, sorority sisters (laughs) from Indiana, we all went to Indiana University. Wow. He lost it and started dying laughing. He called his friends over and and said, I called it. They are from Indiana. He called it, everybody. And proceeded to make fun of us. Too much Coke, a cola, (laughs) maybe, but he was being a jerk. I was too surprised to come up with a witty response, so I walked away equally mad and embarrassed. I am sure there are plenty of lovely stories about great encounters with Ben, but mine was not one of them. Sorry, Bran, this girl was not happy to meet that boy. Merry Christmas, and thanks for creating this lovely DTH community. Julie Nicewander, P.S. We love you, Panda. Late there julie sorry. he's still alive yeah, we'll pass it along to we'll him. Along. julie how do you feel about me <laughs> i liked <laughs> i liked your email it was very here. funny i like the way it ended right. i'm trying to get in your good graces julie <laughs> wow what a great email <laughs> hello at like the hallmark.com um and Please seriously don't ruin brands if love of ben savage yeah any more than necessary i li- what well, listen it's there's nothing it's nothing sacred anymore nothing it, I can't my, listen. Even my love of the Savage Brothers is falling apart. It's uh, nothing is good in my life anymore. Man. It's just I, I hate it You'll all. I, it. Every everything. Allie's is, in with everything Robert is awful. Is a- everything is awful. And you know I like thinking like this. You know I like being positive. That's right. 
Uh, if you're hearing my voice, hello at deckthehallmark.com, especially maybe if you're watching it live. Hello at deckthehallmark.com. Send a what's called my heart. Let's <laughs> kind of see where we can go with this thing. Uh, we'll be back next week with another one. Until then, maybe the first to wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. Deck the Hallmark is the That Sounds Fun podcast. It's produced by Tracy Noah's name. It's recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, thanks so much for your support.